When we think about the greatest inventions of mankind, people often talk about math, nuclear bomb, cars, phone, internet, computer. But there were one very underrated technology that does not get the recognition it deserves, which is called cat. No, no. It's not that cute. I mean, I also thought it was that cat when I first heard about it. But it's CAD, C-A-D, short for Computer Aided Design. Without CAD, it is almost impossible to design all these complex yet efficient infrastructure and products of today's world. CAD used to only be for engineering applications, but nowadays with the rise of 3D printing, everyone can learn to do CAD and make their own custom product. So I'll be taking on the challenge to learn CAD from absolutely zero, and let's see how far we can get in 30 days. And I invite you to follow along my journey as I document my progress and show you the sample projects I made to improve my CAD skills so that I can design my final project. First, I need to set a goal. Very important, we need to work towards a goal that is reasonable and not too complicated because I don't just want to create a simple rectangular box for my final project. It needs to be aligned with my interests and passions. So I asked my friendly neighborhood AI chatbot chat gpt to suggest some simple for beginners yet interesting ideas that i can do in 30 days and i really like the idea of pokeball besides that there are as usual many cat softwares that i can use in the market there are free ones like thinkercad freecad shape 3d and fusion 360 and then there are more premium industrial level softwares like SOLIDWORKS which cost almost $10,000 for a license. After thinking about it, I decided to use SOLIDWORKS. Okay, hear me out. I am not rich and I didn't pay 10 grand for a license. First of all, I got it for free because my uni has a student license and we can all use it for free. Secondly, most of the CAD softwares are almost the same. If you learn the most advanced software available, then you can easily learn other softwares as well. Day one, like always, we start with simple shapes and work our way up. This is also the time where I get familiar with the software and learn the concept of creating 3D shapes in CAD. Turns out it is actually really simple. First, you need to create a 2D sketch. After that, you give each line some measurements. Then you just extrude it to create a 3D shape. So for the first two days, I keep practicing 2D sketches and make it more and more complex. Here are some of the designs I did. Day three is where I started to learn 3D modeling. This is the part where it gets really interesting and it gets quite tricky to learn as well. This is an example that I need to model in CAD. It looks quite complicated, right? So I need to learn how to dissect each part of the 3D model so that I can create simple shapes from it. I also need to plan which surface I want to create first. That way, I do not need to create too complicated of a surface. But one tip I have is that you can customize everything from your keyboard shortcuts to your key presses. So it is good to get used with all the shortcuts and customize it by yourself and keep practicing since you can increase the efficiency when creating all your 3D designs. Day 8, I learn about assembly this is the heart and soul of CAD softwares. It is used to take your different 3D models and combine it together and form a bigger, more complex part. You can visualize and simulate your physical product before actually creating the physical product to see whether it has any errors, whether it fits right. We mainly use a feature called Mate to join two surfaces together. It is really, really fun. You can create some sort of animations. You can move to simulate how it might work in real life. Oh, by the way, I'm following a free online course from YouTube to learn SOLIDWORKS. To be honest, it is actually very hard to find good SOLIDWORKS course from YouTube, most likely due to its hefty price tag but I'll link everything that I used to learn in the description below. I think it is a bit overkill to use SOLIDWORKS for the sole purpose of designing custom products for 3D printing. It is like using a laser cutter to cut your chicken for dinner. SOLIDWORKS is an industrial level engineering tool 
used not only for CAD design but for other simulations like simulating um, stress analysis, dynamic fluid animation, EM waves, they can do so much more. Large organizations like NASA and Tesla uses SOLIDWORKS to design their products. A great alternative that I can suggest is Fusion 360 where they have a free hobby account. And you can find a lot of free good quality Fusion 360 courses on the internet. After that, I learned a bit about surface modeling in SOLIDWORKS. So surface modeling is basically how you do curves in CAD software. It is definitely more advanced to get the curves that you want. Day 15 is the time to design my final project, which is the Pokeball. To be honest, I don't think I'm ready enough since there are so many tools to learn, but I just need to get started with a project so that I can learn along the way. I started brainstorming about the features that is needed for the Pokeball, such as the button, the hinges, the spring, and the latch. If you have no idea how to design something, you can just search for reference on Google because someone will have already designed it before. You just need to copy and change the dimension. I tried to model the physics of spring by using their motion analysis but I still have no idea how to automate everything including the button press so I just have to manually pull it up and down to test whether it works. As you can see, my first button design was not that great but you can always change it later when you design other parts. Now it's time to assemble all my knowledge that I've gained to create the final functioning Pokeball. Initially, I just want to use magnets to open and close, but I said, hey, we have already been doing it, why not just do the more difficult one, which is the latch. The latch is going to be based on the hook of the button. I need to search by myself how to effectively create the cavity, which is based on the hook. So yeah, after I'm satisfied with my design, I put it in my 3D printer and print it out and do some paint job. And this is the result. Personally, I'm really satisfied with the outcome, even though there's definitely improvements to be made. For example, it's a bit harder to close with the latch on. So <laughs> what do you think? Do you think I did well? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, follow my Instagram, and tag me if you actually follow along with the journey of cat design. I want to see your progress. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, Jujiro. Peace out. Poof.